Okay, so here's the deal. The only reason that I am able to open like six packages on camera is because I live in Canada. And shipping is really expensive. Sometimes, if I don't want to pay so much on shipping, I will ship my parcels to the US. And then I have to drive down, which takes an hour and a half from where I live, to go pick them up. So this is the accumulation of a couple months. It's not like I just went and bought this many things in one day and I bought pretty much one of everything. There's one holy grail in here, there's one horse I never thought I would have, and there's a resin, and there's some art supplies. So it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks. Oh, I think this is like the most exciting one and I should save this till the end. I know what's inside, but I don't want to reveal it as the first box because it's too good. So I'm just gonna put it over here and we're gonna come back to that because I don't want to do that right away. You guys have to watch the rest of the video to find out what that one was. Yes! A piece of paper. And these are just clear acrylic rods that I got. Sometimes you can make models that defy gravity without putting them on a base. You can insert a little plastic rod in their foot so that they balance on the rod instead. So I've been looking for these everywhere and they're really hard to find. So I had to order them on Amazon. I sort of know that this one did come from Amazon as well. I bought makeup supplies, y'all. Oh, those are really big. <laughs> what the heck? This is the second time I've ordered something on Amazon and it's come like huge. Those are like <laughs> way too big for what I'm looking for. They're fan brushes. I might be able to use them. Eh, we'll see. These. These are fancy. There's so many. They're just makeup brushes. So I really like using makeup brushes when using pastels because they apply better than like your standard brush. And now I have a whole bunch of sizes and this thing. These feel so gross. The nastiest, it's like it's soft, but it's it feels like it should be leaving residue. So I'm gonna try and paint a model using only acrylics. And I think that these guys are the best tools for that, maybe. This. This is an airbrush holder. I have two airbrushes now, so I needed somewhere for them to go that's a little more secure. Next. Very good packing job. This horse I paid virtually nothing for, and he's super rare. He's actually so nice. really pretty oh wow so this is once upon a time he's really hard to find he's breakfast special run in 2011 that was definitely worth the purchase he's so lovely oh she left me a little note that says thanks she packaged them with a ton of air pockets So this one was the JC's Penny special run model from a long time ago. I don't know what kind of color he would be. He's almost like a buckskin going gray. This mold is really pretty. I should get one as a body. So this one was an impulse buy. I was not on my wish list. He might be for sale depending on if I like him or not. It was one of those instances where I loved the color but not necessarily the mold. Oh, he's cute. Yeah, it's kind of that thing of I don't love the mold. This was kind of a situation where I was bidding on both of these models and then I bought a different model and I forgot I bid on them so then I had to buy them. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Melbourne, I think his name is, and he's Briarfest 2008, so he's quite a few years ago. I pay a ridiculous amount of money for this model. Do I regret it? Slightly. Am I trying to ignore it? 100%. Will I do it again? Probably. There's always like that semi-slight fear that it's like the wrong model. Can you tell why it molded it? Oh, she sent me a fancy scarf to go with it. So this is the Briar Nakoda Pop the Cork in the chestnut paint version. This model completes my Nakoda Conga. So this is the ninth model in the Conga and then I have a custom in the works. So I picked like my favorite models on the mold and I'd say that I've achieved all of them. Boom! There he is! And there's the whole conga. That's so cool. But you all were waiting for the final reveal, so this is the most exciting thing I've bought. 
in a while. This was extremely expensive, <laughs> but I'm really excited about it because I've made it this far in the hobby and my career in the hobby to achieve this. There's the first piece. <laughs> it's a very nice little base. If you don't already follow my boyfriend, he is at Cal Creations on Instagram and he does like little bases, so he is going to be doing this base. Oh my god. She's neat. She's really neat. So this is my very first like large scale resin. She's like small classic size. The goal is that currently I have a lot of Briar Customs that I've been able to show. I bought a mini resin a little while ago so that's also going to be able to be showing in the mini circuit and I wanted to get in with the big guys because the artist resin category is very competitive. I don't love a lot of the artist resins, but this one was really impressive. She's sculpted by Sarah Mink. She is just lovely. So like no matter what color I paint this horse, she's gonna look amazing. But she has such like a tilt on her. She just has so much personality, like the little like droopy ear. Alright, so that was fun. That was a mixed bag of tricks. Still not sure about this Brumby horse. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, happy collecting, unboxing, admiring beautiful horses. <laughs>